Happy New Year! Welcome to our gluten-free kitchen where you can have some gluten-free homemade meals by us. We had a lot of requests for some ciabatta bread. Now, our family has never really made ciabatta bread gluten or gluten-free. So we're going to try an experiment and hope it works out. Um, we'll let you know. Um, we have created our own um, bread flour combination. A lot of the research we did, all the ciabatta um, breads, mentioned a bread flour. So basically an all-purpose flour, but it seemed the trend was more uh, leaning towards more protein. So we did a little all-purpose flour, but that was a little higher in protein. So we have two and a quarter cups of white rice flour. We have my cheat sheet, sorry guys, um, a half a cup of zorgum, and you can see the zorgum difference right there, a little bit darker flour. Okay, and then our starch portion is one and a quarter cups of tapioca. Um, the recipe that we are trying to play around with, we have a teaspoon of salt that we're going to put in our recipe, and we have two teaspoons of guar gum. Now, you can use xanthan gum as well, but we, we wanted to try guar gum in this recipe. So, um, what the recipe basically calls for, a lot of the ciabatta bread recipes, seriously, they take overnight, and we're like, okay, I don't got all time for that. I love you guys, but I got to make this and move on. I got chili to make. So, um, we're going to make this bread in a quicker, we did a lot of research and we found this might be a fun combination. So, we have the yeast rising over here, if you can see that. Now, I wanted to just show you, I did this yeast, I, gosh, I'm gonna say like a half hour ago. Um, the recipe recommends two and a quarter teaspoons of fast acting yeast um, with, I wanted to put a little bit of sugar in it to start it, because ciabatta breads don't usually have sugar, but we put a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar in it and it's two and a quarter cups of water. And so to make the yeast rise, you know, you don't want to go over 110 degrees. So anywhere from like 100 to 110 degrees. Well, that's been a half hour and it has not risen very much. So I said to my sweet daughter who's helping me photo, I said, before we do this, let's start this yeast combination again. And I literally took out my temperature gauger, and I don't usually do that. I mean, I've, I have done this many, many times, and I just like, you know, feel it with my hands and make sure it's warm enough and not too hot. So we really did it this way first. So it's already rising, and that looks really good. So I'm gonna give that another few more minutes. It says about five minutes to let it rise. Um, we're gonna combine it in the mixer. We're gonna whip it up, and it's probably going to be, wash that, it's probably going to um, be about, um, like seven minutes, six, five to seven minutes, and it's going to be really, really loose. That's what we're thinking it's going to be. So why don't you come back to me when this is risen, and I will show you the beating process so we can kind of get a gander at, at the consistency of the flour. Back to you. All right, and we're back. All right, now, I think it's about time. Our yeast looks pretty good, and the water's still warm. But before we combine this, I'm going to grease this bowl with a little bottle of oil to put the flour in it and let it rise. It's supposed to rise after we did all this for about one and a half to two hours. And in that one and a half to two hours, hypothetically, this should rise triple size. Okay, so everything's a crapshoot in the gluten-free world. All right, so I combined all the flours I showed you guys just moments ago, and then our yeast combination which I'm praying, so not used to not using sugar, but let's just, we'll give it a whirl. We'll have a little faith. And we're gonna use this paddle first and combine it. And I will show you what it looks like. I'm gonna start off on, it's loud, so hold on. I'm gonna start off on slow, and then I'm gonna whip out to medium. Two minutes. I think it looks great right now. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna 
going to show it to you so you see what it looks like. Now, it is a nice cakey recipe. What I like to do is I like to whip it a little bit longer for maybe another two to three more minutes on medium and see if I can get it just a little bit fluffier. And I will come back at this exact view and show you what I got in two to three minutes. Because I want to pull it off that paddle right now and use the, um, basically the dough hook. So let me just show you. It looks good. It didn't really change too, too much in its consistency. But um, let me try the dough hook too because a lot of the recipes talked about, well, a lot of recipes were talking about bread machine recipes and letting it knead and do all that in the bread machine. I didn't have it, didn't want to do that. I wanted to show you the actual process. So um, several gluten recipes talked about doing it this way with the paddle and then using the kneading hook. So I said, let's just try to make it, it from a gluten recipe. I hope you don't mind. Gosh, if it works out, that would be fantastic. So, and any of you who have done this before, and if you're just new and gluten-free, this is gluten-free dough. Last night I made our, we had pizza night again. I swear, it sounds like we always eat pizza here. We just do it like maybe once a month, once every two, two months. And I did four batches. And at one point I turned to my oldest child and I said, I think I want to cry. I think I want to cry because this was all over my hands. But I have to say that last night's pizza was probably one of the best pizzas we've ever had. And everybody loved it. And I made so many batches. I was able to even freeze some and we made an alternative crust that I'm actually thinking about making a second video. It had buckwheat in it. Um, it was a version of what we have done before, but it was fantastic, and I didn't have to knead it at all. Oh my gosh, so I think I'll have to show that to you next video. So anyway, all right, I digress, as I usually do. Okay, my kids love that about me. All right, so we don't have anything raw here, so I'm just two sticky fingers, so bear with me, so I'm touching things, but we're not dealing with eggs. And I'm in my own kitchen, so there we go. All right, I'm going to put it on medium again. Get back to me in three minutes, and I'm going to show you what I got. Okay, so I used the hook, and I don't see a great deal of difference other than it's a little smoother. But once again, the consistency of a gluten-free recipe and that of a gluten recipe are much different. So here's how we do it, girls and boys. We're going to put this in here. We're going to, in our um, oiled pan, or bowl rather, excuse me. You're not going to put it over a heated source. You know, sometimes people say put it in your oven if you have a pilot light or whatever. Well, I'm about to make some chili for dinner, so I'm going to put it kind of near my stove, covered, because there'll be heat obviously from my stove, but it's not going to be on my stove. It's going to be near my stove. And I'm gonna plastic wrap it, and I'm gonna let it just sit here and for an hour and a half. And then when we're done, I think it's only like 25 minutes that it um, is supposed to actually bake. We'll see what it looks like though. It's kind of thick, I tell you guys. It's much different than my pizza recipe. Whoa, hello. Much different than my pizza recipe. But gosh, that Zorgum really does give it a pretty color. I don't know if you can see all that color, but it's not quite white, it's more like a beige. Anyway, in a plastic wrap it, of course everything in my house is, you know, gigantic jumbo plastic wrap it. I'm gonna let it go all two hours. I want, I want that sucker to be big. So, we'll see you in two hours. Okay, we're back guys. It has been, um, in five more minutes it'll be exactly two hours. So you can let it rise for an hour and a half to two hours. Now you can clearly see that it's been two hours because I'm out of my work clothes now and my cash clothes, my loungewear. Okay, anywho, I'm gonna creep over there and show you. But it, ours has not, I'm sorry, but it didn't rise no three times, but it definitely rose double. There's no doubt about that. It definitely rose and doubled in size. So I'm gonna go with double in size. So all the recipes that we've talked about so to cut it in half, get your hands in there, cut that dough right in half. That's actually a really nice consistency, very airy. I talked about wetting your hands to shape it. We all know 
that ciabatta bread is very rustic looking. So I don't think beauty is what we're going for in the appearance of this bread or my outfit right now. So we're gonna just go with this. So let me turn the water on. Get you a little bit of a bird's eye view. Okay. So I'm gonna move that over so you can see it. I dusted the bottom of this parchment paper in this baking dish right here with a little bit of flour. And I'm going to also dust the top of it with a little bit of flour. And I have just, I don't even know what company this is. Just, I always have in my pantry some um, gluten-free all-purpose flour just for whatever. And so I have, and I see I even have a bag of my own homemade all-purpose flour and I have this company. It's Kinnikinick and this one is. There's, there's millions of brands out there now. And just drizzle on the top a little bit of flour. So we dusted. Now you can let this rise again if you'd like to let it rise some more. You know, there's never any harm in letting things rise further. I'm just so flippin' anxious to see what it looks like. So I'm going to preheat my oven to about 400 and um, I'm going to let this uh, bake and give me a crust. And then I'd like to lower it and do that 400 for about five minutes. And then I'm going to lower it to 350 for the remaining 20 minutes. It does not look like gluten chipotle bread, but it is rustic. It's, it's actually really delicious, as you can see. We've already cut a few pieces off. Listen to the crunch. You hear it? So it's really pretty. I'm going to give you a little bit more. How's that? You can see the steam coming off of it. It is delicious. Um, I would actually say you could leave it on 400 for a little longer than the five minutes, so um, maybe even 10, 10 minutes and then you can lower it if you want to or you could try to leave it on the whole time. Um, my children who have already eaten a full meal, uh, homemade chili and, and more, have actually asked if they could have some of this with some oil and garlic um, to dip in, so it is a hit over here. So I'm going to say this ciabatta bread recipe was a hit. I love this. I love the, um, the look of it. The um, only thing I might try the next time is I might try to let it rise once I've done it into loaves. That's the only thing I might try to do. Otherwise, I think it rocks. So, good luck, guys. Maybe uh, you could top it with a little bit of garlic powder, some rosemary, and you could bake it that way. There's a lot, a lot of options, but this sucker tastes good. Happy gluten-free baking. From our kitchen to yours. Ciao.